Hey, this is Digital Bike Computing. Today we're gonna to talk about VMware ESXi and the steps that I recommend when you are building and commissioning a new ESXi server and adding it into some sort of a VMware vCenter environment and what are the steps that you should cover off. My name is Amelia and I work in the IT industry and I absolutely love VMware, I think it is one of the greatest virtualization platforms that are out there. And today we're gonna to talk about how to build, or essentially what are the steps that I would take when you are building up a brand new ESXi server. So the very first thing that you wanna be doing is you need to be working out what version of VMware are you going to be installing. So we're assuming that you've already got the hardware. You've got the hardware, the hardware is racked, stacked, and ready to go. Whether you're using some industry standard enterprise hardware, such as server infrastructure, or if you're gonna be using it in a desktop lab environment, regardless of that situation, the hardware is what you need to pick. Make sure that the hardware is sufficient uh, to be able to run this VMware ESXi, the hypervisor. Make sure that there are enough resources that you can put, you know, commission VMs. Make sure that the hardware itself can actually run a VMware hypervisor also. So then following up from that is then to go and download the ESXi ISO. So you can download version 5, 5.5, 5, 6, 6.5, 6, depending on what you want to be doing and which version you want to be using the features from. Each version will require slightly more resources from your host, from your server itself, um, but each, each version will also have an addition uh, of new functionality and features also. Now, there are um, customizable versions that are, have been customized specifically for your hardware vendors as well, so keep that in mind. So if you are using HP or a Dell server or desktop, for example, you can download the ESXi customizable version directly from those websites as opposed to downloading them from VMware, and that way they have all the necessary drivers for that hardware to be able to go and install the hypervisor. Once you've got the ISO, you then need to put it onto some bootable media. Whether you're gonna use a CD or a DVD, or even a USB stick that is bootable. You need to get it onto some sort of media so that you can put it into your server, into your desktop, into your server, and actually boot it, and then start the installation of your ESXi. So when the installation starts, it's gonna ask you to put in your root password. So this is the password that is gonna be used to administer your ESXi environment. So put that root password in, make sure it's a secure password because with this password, you will essentially have full access into your ESXi host. The configuration and the, and the installation of ESXi is very straightforward. We're not gonna talk about that in this video. I do have other videos that do specialize in how to install ESXi itself. But once installation is complete, you then move on to the next step. After a reboot, you'll then be presented with your login screen for ESXi, where you then put in your root password that we've just set up earlier, and then you go ahead and configure some of the network settings on your ESXi host. You wanna think about things such as the IP address. What IP address do you wanna put in? You know, Is it gonna be part of a particular subnet? Your default gateway, so your router's IP address also, right? you wanna be pointing that to a firewall or to a router or wherever, you're, um, you, know, wherever you want that traffic to go. As well as that, your, obviously your, your subnet mask, which will be your default depending on what slash it is, slash 24, 255, 255, 255, zero, um, depending on that subnet range that you want and what class it's part of. And then also you wanna put in your DNS settings as well, such as your domain controllers. If you've got DNS settings, you know, DNS primary server, a secondary, a tertiary, etc straight from there. You can also configure a DHCP if you do want to stick with a DHCP server to allocate the IP address to your host. I wouldn't recommend this. Um, I would always go static if you are configuring an ESXi host. And you also have options to set up a VLAN as well if you're gonna put that host into a particular VLAN. Otherwise, you can leave it as the default if you're not gonna be using a specific VLAN for that configuration. So once all that is configured, you can then go ahead and download the vSphere client and actually connect into your ESXi host. So you download the client, install it on a computer, put in the IP address that you would have configured for that ESXi host, and if the computer that you're using um, let's say a Windows computer that you're using is on the same 
subnet or is, is connectable, is routable to that particular ESXi host, you'll be able to connect to it, log in, and you'll be able to see the ESXi portal. So at this stage, the ESXi host is running on its own. It's not part of any cluster. It's not part of VMware's vCenter infrastructure. It's just running a single host where you can go ahead and you can create your VMs. You can go and you know customize a few other bits and pieces, but the host is still standalone. At this point, you can go ahead and go and configure a whole bunch of settings on your host, possibly before you add it into a vCenter environment or into a cluster. You can go ahead and customize that host later on, but we're gonna do it right now. So if you're running Microsoft's Active Directory in your, in your environment, you may wanna bind your ESXi host to Active Directory. So this is you adding a computer account, creating a new computer account in AD, and then binding your ESXi host into AD, making sure that obviously your DNS settings are configured so that your ESXi host knows where your domain controllers are, it can then see your DC and then bind itself to your AD. So the next step would be to configure some data stores. So by default, if you've got storage on your ESXi host, it would have created a data store there by default. Most of the time, if you are especially in enterprise, you wanna have multiple data stores, whether that is data stores that are gonna be using the disks from your, um, from your host itself, or you could have a SAN or a NAS solution where it's essentially a big you know, network worth of disks where you can you know, partial it up, you can create different RAID groups, you can create storage pools, you can create LANs or shares, and then actually share those out over Fiverr or iSCSI to your host. So as long as all of that is configured in the back end, you then should be able to add data stores from these predetermined blocks of disks that you have created on a attached storage medium. And next go and configure my virtual switches. So these are, as the name suggests, virtual switches where you allocate physical ports that are on your physical host. You can create multiple virtual switches and then you create port groups within those virtual switches and assign VLANs to those port groups if you so choose to do it that way. And then when you're creating your VMs, you then assign those VMs to a particular you know, port group on a particular virtual switch. Configure NTP. So this is essentially the time server for my ESXi host. I want the time to be in sync with the rest of my network. So a lot of people will point their NTP, um, the IP address of the NTP to a particular service that is acting or dishing out the NTP time, uh, whether that is a server, a domain controller, or an actual NTP device, such as a, a switch or a router, perhaps. You could also point to an NTP service out on the internet, but you wanna make sure that your, your ESXi hosts stay in sync in time with the rest of your network. So the host is now semi-configured. Now we're gonna add it into vCenter. So in your vCenter environment, which hopefully you have one configured, you then go and add that brand new host that is now configured into vCenter. Once it's in vCenter, you wanna give it the appropriate license because currently your host is not licensed or it could be running a free version. You wanna go ahead and now add a vCenter license so that it can be part of your vCenter environment and can take and it can, and it can have the benefits of being as part of your vCenter environment. Talking about things like you know being able to vMotion, high availability, and all of those sort of things. You then add it to a particular cluster, whether you've got multiple clusters in your data center, inside your vCenter environment, you add it to a particular cluster. You should be able to make the most of updating your host using the VMware's updating tool that is configured in your vCenter vSphere environment. Go ahead and update that host. Just check that there is any, you know, check if there is any um, security updates that are required. Now, if you did go ahead and download the latest ISO, you should be okay, but it's always good practice to go ahead and download the latest updates for your host before it's fully in production. Once all that is done, you can then have the host ready to use. You can put it into a particular cluster, you can start moving VMs into it, making sure that obviously all the stuff in the back end is configured, which we haven't talked about, which is talking about the network configuration, making sure that it's routable to each other, that all the file rules are all in place, etc., etc. But it should be now ready to go. You can add VMs to it, you can do all those, all of those sort of things. So those are my recommendations to configure a ESXi host. I would love it if you commented below. Commenting shows me that you are interested, that you found this video helpful. 
ask me questions if you so want to, and we'll talk to you next time. So if you found that video helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel, Digital Bike Computing, just on the button there for more videos.